Founded in 1946 as the Basketball Association of America, the NBA League is entering its 75th season in 2021. There have been many legends throughout the history of the league, and in this video, we're going to discuss the legacies they created by decades. Here are the best players of each of the seven decades in NBA history. 1950s, George Mikan. George Mikan was the NBA's first dominant player and its first real superstar. Coming from DePaul University, where he was a three-time All-American, he signed a deal with the Minneapolis Lakers for $12,500 per year, then an astronomically high price. Standing at 6'10 and 250 pounds, Mikan was the tallest player in the league, as there were very few people on the planet at that height in the 1940s. The average center in pro basketball was around 6'7", and Mike had dominated with his size. But he was also extremely mobile, skilled, and could score with both hands. Opponents could not stop him, and Mikan's dominance forced the NBA to make several important rule changes. They widened the lane from 6 to 12 feet, instituted goaltending, and most importantly, they implemented the 24-second shot clock in 1954. Before this rule, teams would often stall the game as much as possible so Mikan wouldn't get the ball, which resulted in games such as 19-18, the lowest score in NBA history. He was also an immensely popular player when basketball was still developing as a sport. Because of his fame, the NBA often sent him to games the day before to promote the game. The Lakers won four titles with Mikan in the 50s and three more in the 40s, making him by far the most successful player in the early days of the league. 1960s, Bill Russell. The season after George Mikan retired, another dominant center came to the NBA. While Mikan dominated because of his offense, Bill Russell was a revolutionary defensive player who could have led the league in blocked shots each year if the stat was counted back then. Russell won his first two titles in the 50s, but it was in the 60s where he and the Celtics became the best team in sports history. The Celtics took a strong hold of the NBA championship trophy and wouldn't let go like a green anaconda over a helpless capybara. Russell and the Celtics won every NBA title in the 60s, except in 1967, when Wilt finally prevailed with the 76ers. And even though Chamberlain was individually a better player than Russell, with far superior statistics, Bill dominated in the most important stat, the number of rings on his fingers. Winning 9 out of 10 titles definitely puts him at the top of the board in the 60s. 1970s, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Ironically, in the next season, after Bill Russell retired, another dominant big man entered the NBA scene. It was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, then known as Lou Alcindor, who was coming off three titles in three college seasons with UCLA. Kareem kept his winning habits, bringing the first and only championship to Milwaukee in just his second season. While Jabbar only won that one title in the 70s, with one more finals appearance, there is no argument that he was the best player of the decade. Most people remember Kareem as the bald guy with glasses who helped the Lakers win five championships in the 80s. But in the 70s, when he had a full head of hair, Kareem was simply unstoppable strong and yet extremely nimble and agile at 7 foot 1. He was dominant on both ends of the court, which the numbers prove as well. Throughout the 70s, Kareem averaged 28.5 points, 15 rebounds, and 4.5 assists per game, along with 3.5 blocks, a number that would have probably been even higher if the NBA counted blocked shots in his first four seasons. 1980s, Magic Johnson. Even though Jordan was individually by far the most superior player in the 80s, and despite Larry Bird being a more complete player, the title of the best player in the decade has to go to Irvin Magic Johnson. Magic opened the decade by winning a championship as a rookie in 1980. When Kareem went down before the pivotal Game 6 of the finals against the Sixers, Magic said to his discouraged teammates, Never fear, EJ's here. He delivered big time, and starting at center, Magic scored 42 points with 15 rebounds and 7 assists, and won the finals MVP trophy. Magic would go on to win four more titles in the 80s, three MVPs, and numerous individual accolades. He was by far the best passer in the league, one of the best leaders, and the biggest star at the time the NBA desperately needed one. 1990s, Michael Jordan. Michael was called the GOAT by some people even before his first title, simply because he dominated the game of basketball like no one else before him. In the 80s, he averaged 33, six and six, and did things that seemed unimaginable, jumping higher than it should be humanly possible. But he never went far in the playoffs, 
And then, after he added more muscle, after he started to pass the ball a bit more, and the rise of Scottie Pippen, everything clicked for MJ and fell into its place. Jordan cemented his legacy with six titles and six finals, and became a basketball deity for everybody who watched him play, and for the generations yet to come. Everybody wanted to be like Mike, and he was shoulders above any other player in the 90s, both on the court and off it, reaching global superstar status unlike any other basketball player before him. 2000s. Kobe Bryant. When Mike retired for the second time, the media pushed the narrative of the next Jordan for at least a dozen players. But nobody embodied MJ's skills and character more than Kobe, who was essentially Jordan's younger brother, as both were cut from the same cloth. Just like his idol, Bryant was maniacal in his preparation, and maybe even more so. When I first played against him, I was surprised how technically sound Michael was. His technique was flawless. I wanted to make sure mine was just as flawless. Kobe. Kobe entered his prime at the turn of the millennium and formed the most dominant one-two punch with Shaq, as the duo brought three more titles to the Lakers trophy room. At the end of the decade, he won two more with Powell, establishing himself as the clear-cut best player in the game. In the aughts, Kobe dominated with the same killer instinct that MJ had, and made history with some of the most legendary games the league has ever seen, like 81 points against the Raptors, or 62 and three quarters against the Mavs. Kobe was absolutely unstoppable in his prime, and throughout the 2000s, he averaged 28 points, six rebounds, and five assists. Even though he won just one MVP, and wasn't the best player on the team for his first three titles, he edges out both Shaq and Tim Duncan as the best player of the decade. 2010s LeBron James Kobe's summit was in 2010, and as his career was slowly declining, it was King James's time to sit on the NBA throne. And even though it was obvious he was the next in line, nobody thought he would sit on the throne for the entirety of the next decade, and that his reign would spill into the next one as well. Braun went to the finals nine times in the last 10 seasons, and with four titles and plenty of broken records, he's without a doubt the best player of the last decade. What he accomplished has only been done by Bill Russell in the 50s and 60s, but back then, to reach the NBA Finals, Russell only needed to win one playoff series. And despite a losing record in the Finals, LeBron has carved his name and face into every Mount Rushmore discussion. And for some, he is now the best that ever did it, aka the GOAT. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as we put out videos like these every day. Let us know what you thought about this video in the comments. And would you put any other player on this list?